Okay, so now let's go and get into determining if a function is bounded. Um, and bounded above, bounded below, not bounded at all. So what I have is just kind of three equations that I just want to, you know, kind of take a look at. And remember, like, if it's bounded above, that means the graph does not go above a given value, meaning the graph is going to have a absolute maximum. If it's bounded below, that means the graph is basically not going to be going below a given minimum value. So therefore, your graph would have an absolute min. Um, and a graph is bounded on the top and the bottom. We just call it bounded. And if it continues to infinity and negative infinity, then the graph is unbounded. So the idea is for us to get pretty comfortable with knowing what these graphs would possibly look like to understand uh, the boundedness. But I understand that at this stage, some of you might still be kind of stuck on what exactly a graph would look like. Um, so therefore, I created a link here for you to kind of follow, or you can just type these into graphing technology and kind of see for yourself. So first one here is, uh, all right, let's just go to example four. So the first one here is a polynomial, uh, y equals negative 3x, negative 3x to the fourth plus 2x plus 1. Well, the important thing that we really just need to look at here is you can see that the graph is obviously has a maximum value, right? The graph does not go below, uh, go above the y value of 1.825. So that is your absolute maximum value. And therefore, we can say that the graph is bounded above. So all I'm going to do is just say that it's bounded above. I don't need to say, you know, where it occurs. That's that'd be for the extrema. Bounded above. Let's actually zoom in there. All right. So let's go back and look at the next equation here. So the next equation. Oh, interesting. So this looks like a uh, semicircle, right? It's kind of like half a nice little circle. So you can see here that, again, I have a maximum, and then I actually have two absolute minimum values. So my absolute minimum value occurs at y equals 0. My max is at 2. But again, since we have a max and a min, you can see the graph does not go above those max and mins. So therefore, this would be equation would be called what we bounded, because it's bounded above and it's bounded below. So we'll just say bounded. All right, last example is y equals 3 over x minus 1. So let's put that out. And we can see here, looks, oops. Ah, that was kind of cool. Didn't mean to do that. Uh, let's go and see here as I let's see if I can do my left hand. No, it's not working. I guess it doesn't like my left hand. Huh, all right. But as we zoom out, you can see that this graph is continually um, going Oops. Continually going up and going down. So therefore, there is no absolute max or absolute min. So therefore, this graph would be what we call not bounded. So I'll just say not bounded. And there you go, guys. That's really about as basic as we can get for that one.